So we are signing off 2020 with something very special. As you can see beside me, this is the very latest Ferrari, the SF90 Stradale. It's one of the very first cars delivered in the UK, and it will be one of the first, if not the first, right-hand drive car to hit the open market. Um, so I'm gonna show you around it, discuss some of the spec, the different features to why we think this is such a game-changing Ferrari. Um, it really is the Ferrari we've been most excited about since it was revealed sort of over a year ago now. Um, it's a genuine brand new model, not just one of these sort of evolved facelifted versions. Ferrari actually say it's their first plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. Apparently the LaFerrari doesn't quite count, maybe because it's a halo car, maybe because it doesn't actually have an all electric mode. Um, but what this definitely is, is it's Ferrari's brand new flagship model. So it bumps the 812 Superfast down the list. And it's also the most powerful and fastest Ferrari road car ever made. So just before we get into the video, I just want to give a quick shout out to our sister company, Elevate Finance. If you're in the market to buy a hypercar, supercar, luxury performance car on finance in the UK, make sure you give these guys a call. They'll give you great advice. They've got fantastic relationships with the lenders and they'll potentially get you a better finance deal than what you've been offered elsewhere. We'll leave their details on the screen and in the description below. So let's show you around the exterior of the car. I mean, for me personally, I've fallen in love with the way this car looks. I just think it looks so slick, so modern. Uh, I know not everyone's going to agree with me, um, but I just love the sort of low down stance, the proportions I think are perfect. Um, and this color in Grigio Silverstone is obviously going to suit someone that's looking for the more sort of understated and classy example. Uh, sets it off with the black roof. Uh, but the car also looks amazing in red, I think. Um, but yeah, so you've got this sort of more rounded front end, um, which I think is gorgeous. Um, you've got this brand new light design, they call it the slit light design. Um, and it basically integrates all with the air intakes here. So you get air coming through there to cool the brakes. You've got this sort of triple light bar here. And I just think they look super futuristic and cool. Um, they're also the very first Ferrari to feature LED matrix lights. I think Ferrari may be a little bit late to the party on that one. Um, where they're certainly not late to the party on is aerodynamics. Ferrari are the very best. So you've got this S-duct, a bit like the 488 Pista, where the airflow comes down here and over the bonnet, keeping the car pushed down and glued to the road. Um, you've also got these big air intakes here. You can see they're actually slanted, so they're really set and cut back underneath the nose of the car. Um, you get these little louvres down here. So being a Ferrari, as you might expect, there are loads of carbon fiber options. So you've got this full carbon fiber front spoiler, that's 4,300 pounds. You get these little flicks here. Um, and then down here, you've got the full carbon fiber underdoor cover, which sits under the door. That's just shy of 5,000 pounds. That's an expensive option. Um, it's worth just mentioning on the wheels, so these are the upgraded 20 inch forged alloys. Um, so you'll notice this sort of two-tone brand new design. I actually really, really like them. Um, you can also get carbon fiber wheels if you want to pay a lot, a lot of money. Um, worth mentioning, new door handles. Ferrari have finally done away with the traditional uh, pull, which kind of stick out. And they've now got this integrated push button to open the door, which I think is better. I love how sort of sculpted the whole side of it is. Uh, and then you've also got the carbon fiber side air splitter here. Um, that's one of the cheaper options, only about 2,000 um, pounds. One that's not cheap, it's back here, is the carbon fiber rear diffuser. Huge piece all down here. I think it's 6,700 pounds or something like that. Um, one th quite cool thing you'll notice is every alternate fin is actually hollowed out. Um, I believe that must be something to do with aerodynamics. Um, but there's loads going on back here. You've got the central dual exhaust sitting quite high and proud. Um, you've got these new sort of horizontal design taillights and this beautiful integrated rear spoiler. This section here is actually active, so it lowers and raises as you're driving. Um, but you'll see loads of aero, you've got all this gap. So there's all airflow coming through um, and providing downforce for the car. And then you've got this wonderful view into that sunken down engine, which we will come back to. 
Right, so just before we get onto the tech and the performance of this thing, I just want to quickly show you the interior because I think this is one of the most cutting edge interiors. Um, Ferrari actually call it an aeronautical cockpit, um, basically referring to its sort of spaceship-like feel. You've got this very curved windscreen. And it's just really come on a long way, even since I reviewed the F8 Tributo in the summer, which was more like a sort of evolved 488 uh, cabin. This just feels like a whole new generation. Um, one thing that's also new is the new carbon fiber racing seats. These are an upgraded option, but you'll notice the new design of the seat. There's way more carbon fiber which is exposed. Um, and I just think they actually make the 408 Pista and FH Tributo seats feel quite dated. Um, but let's hop inside and actually see how comfortable they actually are. All right, so into the driver's seat and instantly you notice how driver focused this is, how surrounded by tech you are. It's just an amazing, place to sit. The seats are firm but comfy, um, but look, let's switch this thing on. So no longer does it have the button for start engine. It's just got this sort of touch pad. Bring it on, everything comes alive. Um, so you'll notice the new 16 inch beautifully curved display. I mean, it's the sort of screen you'd see in a Mercedes S-Class or something, it really is divine. Um, and then on the steering wheel, so the steering wheel now has so much more going on, uh, but it's done away with pretty much all the buttons and everything's on a touchpad, it's all got haptic feedback. Um, so you'll notice a little rotary shift here for the cruise control. You do still have the Manatino, um, which switches from sport to race or wet mode, or you can turn the traction control completely off. But what the main new thing is, is the different driving modes, which are on the left-hand side. Um, so the default setting is hybrid mode. So you're getting, you know, using the battery, but the engine kicks in when you need it. Um, but then you can switch into what they call ED, which is full electric mode. So the car does about 15 miles in full electric mode. Obviously you didn't have that in the LaFerrari, so it is the very first Ferrari to have an all electric mode. Uh, one step up from that is into performance. Uh, performance is really where you wanna sort of charge up the battery and use most of the engine, really get some enjoyment out of the car. The final mode is called Qualify, and that is really for out and out maximum performance, probably best suited for the track. But I love this whole new dynamic of driving a Ferrari, all these different modes, this little bit of eco-friendliness, so you know, you feel like you're doing your bit for the environment. Um, but look, there's screens everywhere. You've got this sort of passenger display, which is what they used to call it, but that's pretty much standard on the SF90. Um, one of the other cool features, I think, is the transmission gate down here. It's got this sort of old school feel, um, but with a sort of modern twist. It's sort of a nod to the old classic Ferraris with the open clickety-clank manual gearbox, um, but it's really, really cool indeed. Okay, so onto the performance and the engine of this car. Um, so if you weren't impressed with the car so far, you're gonna be impressed with some of its performance figures. Just before I do that, I just wanna show you the brand new key. Um, I know not everyone loved the big chunky key of the 488 and the F8 Tributo, and Ferrari have now created this super lightweight, really minimal key. So you know where to put a key ring or a tracker fob holder. Uh, but yeah, I do like that a lot. Um, so onto the engine and you'll see how sunken down it is. That is giving the car a much lower sense of gravity. Uh, apparently it also helps with cooling the engine. Um, but the big headline figure is this 1,000 brake horsepower. Um, it actually, actually has 986 brake horsepower to be precise, um, or 1,000 CV as the Italians like to call it. Um, but the car does 0 to 62 miles an hour in 2.5 seconds. Um, this is ridiculous quick, uh, and it's got a top speed of 211 miles an hour. But this is faster than a LaFerrari. Do I need to say much more? Um, but it is the same V8 twin turbo from the 488 Pista and Tributo, um, but it has been reworked. And then obviously it's combining with the three electric motors. So you've got two electric motors in the front, one in the back, um, which is giving you all those extra horses and giving you all that hybrid tech. Um, Interestingly, in all electric mode, the car drives as a front wheel drive car and it actually does 80 miles an hour, just over 80 miles an hour 
uh, in all electric mode. Another interesting thing on the car is it has no reverse gear. So reverse actually works when you press the button, it stays in full electric mode. So the V8 is completely switched off. I'm sure the neighbors are gonna be happy about that. Um, another big fact and a big feature of this car is the fact it's four wheel drive. Ferrari actually say it's their very first four wheel drive sports car because they're basically saying the likes of the FF and the GTC4 Lusso are Grand Tourers. Um, but yeah, it's got this four-wheel drive system, which is really broadening the appeal of the car. Um, so yes, it does incredible lap times, this thing, but it also allows you know anyone to sort of jump in and get in the car and get behind the wheel and not feel like they're gonna be terrified of putting it into a hedge. Um, so it really is just a car for the masses, but with unbelievable power so really it's only the best drivers that are going to really realize the true potential um, for the really hardcore drivers you're probably going to want to get the Assetto Fiorano package and um, that is actually a 40,000 pound option um, and you basically get a much more track focused it's lighter you get a big carbon fiber rear spoiler you get stickier tires you get titanium uh, suspension springs um, but the drawbacks of that pack is you don't get suspension lift you don't get bumpy road mode um, so if you're in the UK those are the kind of things you probably do want so it's going to take quite a brave person to spec that but I hope some people do because it really does make the car a lot more hardcore Okay, so finally onto the important bit for those looking to buy an SF90. Where does this car sit in the market and what are the prices? So the base price of the car is around £375,000. Any decent spec car is going to have the best part of £50,000, maybe £100,000 worth of options. So you're looking at close to half a million. Yes, sounds expensive, but let's put it into perspective. This car sits one down from the LaFerrari. LaFerrari, today's money, £2 million. This car is faster, newer, better tech, and it's a quarter of the price. And you get a right-hand drive version in the UK, which you don't get with the LaFerrari. Even when you look at its competitors, so you've got the likes of the McLaren Senna, you know, that sits one down from the P1. Yes, it's more track focused, but they're 700,000 pounds today. Um, then you could look at Aston Martin. They've just brought out this car called the Valhalla that sits one down from the Valkyrie. That's best part of a million pounds. You know, you could even compare this with the Mercedes AMG Project One. Yes, the Project One's a lot rarer, but it's a similar package, a similar car, and they cost two and a half million pounds. So I think Ferrari are being pretty generous with this model. Yes, it's a production model, but look, it costs four to 500,000 pounds. There's not gonna be as many of these made as there are the likes of the 488s and the Portofinos. You know, this is one of the first cars in the UK. Uh, but the UK deliveries are after most of the European cars. Um, and you only have to look on the European market. All the cars in Europe are at least 100,000 pounds, 100,000 euros, I should say, over list. So I actually think they're going to hold their money pretty well, at least for the first year. Then they bring out the SF90 Spider. That might have some effect on it. Will they bring out a lightweight sort of track focus version? Not sure. They've already got that Assetto Fiorano package, so maybe they won't. Um, but just before we end the video, just got some finance figures from Elevate Finance, just to see how much this car might cost on a monthly basis. Um, so I'm told with a 20% deposit on this car, you can get into it for less than 3,000 pounds a month. Um, yes, that sounds still expensive to some people, but for the people that buy these sorts of cars regularly, it's actually very, very good. So there you have it. That is our final video of 2020. Quite nice to do a video in the showroom. Normally it's super busy with phones going, so we don't do them in here. But look, I hope you enjoyed the video. What do you think of the SF90? I'm sure this is a car that's gonna split opinion. We wanna hear your comments, um, but hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to our channel, and we will see you again in 2021.